And we're going to begin every story with the blank page. This one has the title, With Her Bare Hands, Bear spelled B-E-A-R, and by Jay Wilburn. I'm going to try and do this one with sort of an interesting um, secondary perspective, and we'll see if we can make something special out of this. All right. Sandy didn't wake up until the police were already there. <clears throat> By then, she was being whisked. How do you spell that? Whisked away. Whisked. Whisked away. And they spent an almost sleepless night with their aunt on the other side of town. Sandy was still foggy from being being awakened. I think I may be using the wrong uh, form there, but I think it'll be all right. Sandy was still foggy from being awakened in the middle of the night among... Yeah, let me let me make that a new paragraph, too. <clears throat> among all those flashing lights, she only saw her mother for a moment and it was hard to tell in strobing red and blue light but Sandy thought she saw blood on her mother mom said uh, let's make this a new paragraph too all right mom said everything <clears throat> was fine but she was crying when she said it Sandy and Kyle's aunt said everything was fine too but I mean I don't want two commas there it's probably proper but I'm gonna take it out but that's the sort of thing adults said to children when everything was far from okay. Kyle claimed to have been awake the whole time, even before the police came. Let's see. Um, she didn't believe everything her older brother told her. She'd be a fool if she did. Sometimes she had no choice. That night was one of those times, and it was one of those times because Kyle was the only one willing to say what happened. man broke into our house 
he said in hushed tones so their aunt wouldn't hear. <clears throat> Those words struck fear into Sandy. Someone breaking into their house was one of her deepest fears. It gave her many sleepless nights. Sometimes she only slept well when it rained. She thought no one would be out breaking into houses when it rained. Uh, joke, let's say the joke, the joke was on her because she had slept soundly through the whole thing on account of the pouring rain when she fell asleep. I may never sleep again, she thought. Okay, well, I tried to make that italicized for her thoughts, but it didn't work the first time. All right, there we go. All right. Kyle pulled her out of her troubled thoughts with the next bit. It was someone she knew. Who? Sandy asked a little too loud. Okay, let me put an exclamation point in there with a comma. All right, who, she demanded. Okay. Kyle shushed her. Listen, no, let me do commas here. Listened for their aunt. And after hearing nothing, he said, I don't know. It was a man. Not dad, though. Why would it be dad? She wondered. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, capitalize that. She wondered, but didn't ask. All right, let me italicize that real quick. Say what I have so far and we'll keep going. All right. Why would it be dad, she wondered, but didn't ask. Kyle said she fought him off with her bare hands. Uh, Sandy wanted that bit explained, but their aunt came in and checked on them. She sat between the kids and rubbed their backs 
And she whispered that everything would be fine. Kyle must have believed her because he fell asleep as Sandy lay awake for hours thinking about her mother's bare hands. The <clears throat> events of that night grew into something much, comma, much bigger in her, let's say Sandy, in Sandy's imagination. The, the next day, they returned home with mom. Their mother had bruises under her eyes and she moved with stiff joints. Lots of people stopped by and spoke with her in conspiratorial, what a fancy word, in conspiratorial whispers. We'll put a comma there. Kids not included kind of whispers. All right, I'm gonna put dashes between that. Kids not included. Mom being distracted gave Sandy time to inspect the house and piece together what really happened that night. All the stuff adults leave out. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to add something to this. Okay. The whole drive home. The whole drive home, Sandy kept staring at her mom's hands. There we go. That'll make the story make sense as we go along. All right. Mom, being distracted, gave Sandy time to inspect the house and piece together what really happened that night, all the stuff the adults leave out. The house had been cleaned, but the house had been cleaned, but it was a quick job. They only had one night and one morning to do it. So clues, um, I'm going to make this a new paragraph too. So clues were left behind. Sandy collected all this data say all these details all these details and stored them away these were the pieces her imagination latched onto and used to build and 
embellish embellish the story of that night. Okay, I think that starts with an E. Nope. Let's see how you spell embellish. Oh, I need two L's. That's all it was. All right. I'm going to add one more thing up here, too. So we get back to the place where they were taken from the house. All right. Mom said everything was fine, but she was crying when she said it. The police hustled the kids out of the house and wouldn't let them turn around to see the kitchen where most of the uniformed officers were gathered and where the white flashes of old of old fashioned cameras um, popped and washed out um, washed out the colors around them why don't they just use their phones Sandy wondered okay very good I'm happy with that and that'll set up what's about to happen next all right The, the front door would eventually be replaced. Their blue door became an ordinary brown one. That Sandy never really liked. Say so before that, there, before that, there were deep cracks above and below the doorknob. Someone had drilled in big fat screws to hold it together until the new door was installed. The deadbolt wasn't broken. So Sandy thought maybe they forgot to lock it. In her mind, a man, I'll say the man, someone twice as tall and twice as ugly. In her mind, the, the man, the man, someone twice as tall and twice as ugly as any ordinary man, had kicked his way inside. He wore big black boots that left a little rubbery he wore big black boots that left a little rubbery streak on the outside 
of the door. Of course, he had a scraggly black beard like a pirate or a crazy mountain man. Sandy never saw a picture of the actual man, but this was the one she painted for herself. Mom was in the living room watching TV. Mom was all they had. So she had to work all day and still be mom in the evenings. Still be a mom, let's say. A mom in the evenings. She was tired all the time, even on the weekends. Sometimes she fell asleep while watching TV, but this night Sandy pictured her mother as being wide awake and springing to action when the bad man kicked his way inside. Mom stayed up watching TV even when she was tired and the kids were in bed. It was the one time she got to herself. Everything in the living room had been cleaned up, but a folded napkin, let's say a folded paper, a folded paper napkin had fallen to the floor at the edge of the couch's ruffle and had been missed in the cleanup. Sandy saw her mother rising so fast from the couch rising so fast from the couch that she scattered whatever snack she had been eating. It wasn't popcorn or candy. No napkin for that. Let's say no folded napkin. No folded napkin for that. Mom must have been eating a sandwich Sandy pictured it as half finished. Pictured it as half finished. 
sometimes there were chips on the plate as she played through the events of that night in her imagination. Sometimes there were no chips. That detail wasn't that detail wasn't important. <clears throat> Mom still had on her jeans and a a faded college sweatshirt from a school from a school she didn't finish um, finish learning at it was her comfortable after work clothes. It was what she wore. It was what she wore when the kids were taken away by their aunt. She never wore it again because they were stained with blood after that night. Mom ran at the man instead of away. The kids were asleep upstairs. Mom ran at the man instead of away. The kids were asleep upstairs and the stairs were close to the front door. So the monster of a man had turned toward the stairs and mom charged. He was tricking her though. Sandy knew bad men were tricky. That's why everyone warned you never to go anywhere with strangers no matter how tricky they tried how tricky they tried to be all right as mom got close um, he swung a fist as big as his black boot and knocked her against the wall by the front door where a couple of the photos on let's say a couple of the frames a couple of the frames on the wall were slightly tilted the day they all came home <clears throat> uh, 
a little blood came from mom's okay that'd be capitalized from mom's nose and got on her favorite sweatshirt the bad man grabbed her by the throat because that's what bad men do. He lifted her off the ground <clears throat> and laughed in her face. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <coughs> he lifted off the ground and laughed in her face because that's <coughs> what terrible men did in movies. Did in the movies. Sandy wasn't supposed to watch, but Kyle sometimes told her about. <clears throat> okay. He laughed. He went on laughing and carried her into the kitchen. Sandy wasn't sure why, but she had a sense that he planned to do something bad to her, bad to mom, and if she didn't stop him, he would go after Sandy and her brother next. Sandy moved the fight into the kitchen in her version of the story because that was where the other clues were. <clears throat> the bad man missed that mom's hands were changing. It's starting to rain outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, hair sprouted sprouted around her fingers. The back of her hand and around her wrists. Sometimes Sandy thought part of her mom's forearms started to grow fur too. Once he was once he had her in the kitchen he brought her close to his face Once he had her in the kitchen he brought 
Once he had her in the kitchen, he brought her close to his face to whisper the terrible things he planned to do to her and the kids. He planned to do to her. Sandy made it whispers so she wouldn't have to hear what it was. He then hit mom in the face at least twice, but sometimes, uh, let's say, but sometimes Sandy made it more because mom needed time to finish her transformation. Okay. <clears throat> As her furry hands grew in size, <clears throat> dark black claws emerged from mom's bare hands. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> He pulled her close, <clears throat> one more time, and started to say what he was going to do to the kids once he was done with her. That's <clears throat> that's when she growled <clears throat> with a voice that went with her new pause. Now his face went from joyful evil to real terror. Mom clawed at his cheeks, shaving off his beard and turning his face to bloody ribbons on both sides. He cried out in a high girlish voice that embarrassed him. Sometimes he still held her in the air for a moment longer as his blood got on mom's, kind of decapitalized mom again, on mom's sweatshirt and jeans ruining them. Either way, she clawed through 
his sleeves and tore away parts of the bad man's muscles in into useless flaps of flesh. By now he had dropped her and he cried as they dropped her on her feet. Dropped her on her feet dropped her on her feet. And and he cried louder and harder than Sandy ever had. He saw her bare hands all furry and deadly at that point he peed himself turning the front of his dirty pants into a big dark wet stain sometimes he pooped himself too in every rerun of the story in Sandy's head he turned to run out the broken front door but mom grabbed him and dragged him back into the kitchen with her. Mom wasn't mean and even with her magic bare hands she did not like to hurt people even in even with her magic bare hands she did not like to hurt people but if she let this bad man go he would hurt other moms and children again Sandy's mom say not all moms had bare hands Sandy's mom could not let him go. This had to be finished tonight, no matter how big of a mess it might make. All right. He tried to bite and kick to get away from her, but she lifted him up and slammed him down on the sink. breaking all the dishes Sandy and Kyle
Kyle had helped mom to wash and set up in the drying rack. Sandy knew this part because someone had missed a few broken pieces of plates. One jagged bit was under the edge of the cabinets near the baseboard. A few more crumbs of broken plates had remained in the sink. They ate on paper plates for, okay, paper plates, which apparently is not a compound word, okay. They, they ate on paper plates for a couple days and then mostly on plastic, say on new plastic plates after that unless they needed to heat something up in the microwave. All right. The bad man had climbed out of the sink and spilled broken plates everywhere. He was scared, but he was mad now, too. Bad men don't like to lose. They don't think women and girls should win. They, we should win ever. They get embarrassed when a girl shows them up. When bad, when bad men are embarrassed by girls, they try to hurt them. Let me fix a couple spelling errors here. Try to hurt them. Okay, come on now. All right, try to hurt them. So the bad man attacked mom again, and it was the biggest mistake of his life. He tried to swing his bad man fists for bad man punches. Mom used her bare hands to maul him. He sure did wish he could get away then, but it was too late for him. He had earned all the pain and suffering he had coming. 
mom through him into the refrigerator, but not hard enough to break it. The magnets were all moved around. So Sandy figured out the magnets were all moved around. So Sandy figured out that um, they had been knocked onto the floor when the bad man slammed into the door. Okay. Whoever okay. whoever cleaned up whoever cleaned up um whoever cleaned up did not know where they went so they just put all the magnets so they just put all the magnets back on in a hurry some of them were even upside down until mom finally fixed them a few days later. Either the bad man tried to step away from the refrigerator or or mom lifted him away with her bare hands because there were spots of blood along the edge of the kitchen floor uh, toward the dining room. <clears throat> All right, toward the dining room. Sandy had stared at those tiny bright red spots for a long time that day. She had debated whether those were spots of mom's blood or of the man who broke into the house the night before. The floor was mopped but was streaked with curved lines of grime meaning someone besides mom okay mom needs to be capitalized someone besides mom had mopped up the only reason they would have mopped in the middle of the night after all this was because 
there was a lot more blood on the floor. <clears throat> because there was a lot more blood on the floor. Okay, those tiny spots had just been missed. If there was a lot of blood on the floor, it must have been from the bad man. Because mom was alive and the bad man was gone. Kyle cleaned the floor. Kyle cleaned the floor later. He sprayed and wiped up the spots of blood before mom could see them. He told Sandy that was why he did it. He didn't want mom to see it. Say Sandy couldn't make sense of that because obviously mom had seen it when she was beating the bad man with her bare hands the way Kyle had told her. He even tried to re-mop the floor because mom's back was so stiff from the fight. He just made more streaks. Different streaks. After a few days, Mom felt some better. After a few days, Mom felt some better and remopped the floor. Well, let's just say mopped. And mopped the floor a third time. But a third time herself and then it was right. That night she had torn through the bad man's shirt as he begged her to stop and promised and promised not to hurt anyone ever again mom's claws ripped into let's say through ripped through and into his chest and belly. He choked okay, hold on. he choked on his own blood and screamed at her why 
y over and over again tiny dots of blood flew from his lips and spotted the floor where the first where the first man to mop had missed them mom growled down at him because you are a liar bad man all right <clears throat> all right uh, he tried to shuffle away but only spread more of his blood to be mopped up later. He was confused and moved toward the dining room instead of the front door. Right, front door is two words toward the front door it didn't matter though because mom was far from finished with him <clears throat> floor where the tiles in the kitchen met the fake wood floors of the dining room that's where a small curve of dark stain remained forever at the ends of those wood pieces. Mom finished him off there. She ripped out his heart. She tore open his lungs. She tore open his lungs so he couldn't scream anymore and wake up Sandy before the police arrived. She ripped into his stomach like a plastic bag. Sandy always pictured a whole hamburger, say cheeseburger, whole cheeseburger. Sorry whole cheeseburger and fries 
billing out. Bad men never ate healthy. Mom will say even after he fell still and silent, ruining the wood floor, mom couldn't afford to replace. Even after he fell silent, okay, I may make this a new paragraph even though technically it's the same thing, same idea. Even after he fell still and silent, ruining the wood floor mom couldn't afford to replace, she shredded him like barbecue with her sharp black claws at the end of her bare hands. When the police arrived, I'll say finally, when the police finally arrived, and all the work, I'll say all the messy work, all the messy work was already done. Mom changed her hands back into her human uh, into her human form. Okay. Sandy imagined the police would have more questions for a woman who could turn part way into a bear. Mom didn't get in trouble because of all the blood. It was a bad man. After all, and bad men were the police's job. Policeman's job. All right. We're in the home stretch here, I think. All right. After the kids were gone, the imperfect cleanup job had to begin. Since the police weren't there to stop the bad man themselves, they felt bad and helped clean up. The body was something Sandy could never figure out. I'll say after finding those bright dots of missed blood, she had she had looked for more blood between the kitchen and the front door. 
if they missed blood in the kitchen, they must have missed some, let's say, while carrying the body out. Sandy even checked the windows to see if they tossed the body out. Let's say the bad man's body. The bad man's body. I'm misspelling everything. The bad man's body out that way. But no blood dots were missed there or anywhere else. Sometimes she could convince herself they just cleaned up the rest. Sometimes she could believe they had a bag big enough to hold the bad man and drip no blood on the way out. But sometimes when but sometimes when Sandy replayed that replayed the events of that night as she constructed them in her imagination the night ended with everything cleaned up except for the body police promised to come back for it but they forgot as Sandy and Kyle's aunt got them ready for mom as Sandy and Kyle's aunt got them ready to bring home mom had called and said she would drive to get them her aunt had begged mom to let her bring them home. Mom had been through a lot. But Mom insisted. The only thing Sandy could figure The only thing Sandy could figure was Mom wanted to clean up more. If Mom had cleaned up, the floor 
would have been mopped properly. The pictures would be straightened. The magnets would have been right. And all the pieces of broken plate would have been gone. So what was mom doing? Sandy often ended her imagined story before the last cleanup. Sometimes she pictured her mom um, turning completely into a bear to finish off the rest of the body the police had forgotten. Mom didn't have time to clean up all the stuff the police had missed, but she needed to get rid of the rest of the bad man before Sandy and Kyle got home. So Sandy pictured a big furry brown bear eating up the bad man, including all his meat, all his meat, bones, and hair. Only a few drops of blood were missed as mom's bare tongue licked up the rest. Okay. That day and for a number of days after, people stopped by to whisper talk with mom. Sandy caught some of it as she went over the evidence to understand let's see, okay let me fix something here over the evidence again and again to understand what to understand what happened the visitors whispered compliments about how amazing, incredible, and strong mom was. Sandy knew all of this. 
she wondered how many of them knew about mom's bare hands. Sandy was still scared to go to sleep at night for a long time. But whenever she whenever she lay awake for too long she thought about mom's bare hands and she fell asleep feeling safe. All right. 